Okay, um, hello and welcome to this Java Bucket Plugin Development tutorial series. Um, uh, I previously mentioned in one of my other videos, the flatland terrain generation, that I was going to show you how to do hills and sort of a little bit more complicated terrain generation. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing in this series. Um, so, like I said, what we're going to be doing is generating some sort of terrain which includes hills that you know are bigger than one chunk. So I'm going to explain the well, I'm going to try and explain the principles of you know having large terrain features, basically that, you know, bigger than one chunk. So um, we have a sort of starting point here, which is more or less where I left off with the flatlands generator. Although I have removed the terrain generation code. Um, so what we're doing is basically creating a new plugin. It's called Not So Flatlands because it's not going to be flat. Um, and this bit here, this is the main class file, which just extends the Java plugin class, which I have mentioned previously. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. Um, but you know, I think the TNT Notifier plugin example, uh, sorry, plugin tutorial, uh, is the best place to go if you don't know what about you know what's going on here. Um, cause this is a well, it's a fairly advanced-ish topic. One of the most fun things I find, terrain generation. Anyway, um, so yeah, basically I'll just go through the code that we have so far. Um, there's nothing too complicated. So like I said, we have this class which extends the Java plugin, and this is our main plugin class. Um, so we have an onEnable method, which just tells people that this plugin is enabled on the server, and then a disable method, which tells them it's been disabled. Uh, we also have a log message method, which again is something that I've used in all my previous videos, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But essentially what it does is just takes a parameter as a string and logs that string as you know a message with the name of the plugin and the version before it, you know, in the server's log file. Um, and this down here is another method that we, we created. Um, and again, this is something that was explained in the Flatlands generator uh, tutorial. Um, and all this does is tells so you, you know uh, how when you specify the plugin, the, the world's generator, you specify the name of the plugin. This method here is what is called to actually get the generator from that. So that's why it needs to be here. Yeah, basically, it just defines the default generator. Um, yeah, more or less. So you just need that basically. Um, and again, that is something I explained in the Flatlands tutorial. So that's our main class file. This is fairly standard stuff. Um, and then we have this generator, which is this class here that we return an instance of. And at the moment, all this does is import some things and basically nothing else. So again, these are things I explained in the previous generation, you know, train generation video. Um, so this chords to byte is a method that we're going to be using in our generate uh, method, um, which just um, it what does it do? It sort of converts the x, y, and z coordinates into this byte string which you sorry string you know into this number which goes into this byte array um, and then that's what's returned and it generates you know the actual terrain um, so yeah that's basically that and again that was explained before so I'm not going to go over it too much and finally this thing at the top here uh, the get default populators is something that we will be using um, and at the moment this just returns an empty list which I did explain again for the final time in the previous series so that's basically that so what we need to do is, well, we need to start generator our terrain. So the problem we face here is that, um, like I said, if you're generating, if you're trying to generate like a hill, a hill shape, you know, like you play the game all the time, you know, there's hills. Uh, if you're trying to gen generate one of those, the problem is that you can't do it on a chunk by chunk sort of basis because you need to, you need to know the height of the blocks in the chunk next to it to be able to make it look smooth. Uh, the problem there is that obviously you can't do that because if you did, you'd end up causing like infinite chunk generation because you know you'd have to generate the chunk next to it so you could get the height, and then to generate the chunk next to it, you have to generate the chunk next to that, and it just goes on and on and on, and there's no way around that. So what we do instead is create sort of a sort of height map in a way first, and not really first either, um, and then we just use that to generate our hills. Um, so we're going to be using the um, simplex octave generator. Um, don't worry too much about the name um, or any of the maths involved because it's it's like a mathematical thing basically. Um, basically, it generates a wave pattern, um, a three dimen two dimensional, well you can't have three dimensional, a two dimensional wave pattern. So you may have seen these images before, but basically it's like a 
a large grid with sort of high and low points and it's all smooth. It generates that. It's like a mathematical thingy, basically. But I'm going to explain it in the terms of how to use it, not in the terms of, you know, these are the equations it uses or anything like that. Um, so don't worry too much about this sort of complicated ter terminology. Anyway, what we need to do first is get on with our generate function, because at the moment, method, sorry, at the moment, this will just generate a empty terrain, just nothing. Um, so yeah, we need to actually, you know, start making this basically. So what I've done a little bit here, what I've got is the empty blocks byte array, which is something that came from the other Flatlands video. And we also, ha also have these variables x, y, and z, and these are all integers. Okay, so what we need to do is gener uh, create a new random object. So the not not like a random object, um, it's a type of object. Random class, it's the random class, and it essentially it's like a random number generator. So we're going to create a new variable. Its type is going to be random, like that, and its name is going to be rand. And this is going to be equal to a new instance of the random class, and this just takes one parameter, optional parameter, um, and this is the seed that you want to use. So we're just going to use the seed from the world, which we can do by using world get seed, which is that one there. Okay, now we have that, we can use that to create our sort of octave map. Um, so what we do now is create a, another new variable. The type of this is going to be simplex octave with a C generator. Like so. And this variable is going to be called octave, why not? And this is going to be equal to a new simplex octave oh dear generator oh my god I can't type generator, there we go and this takes two parameters this constructor the first one being the random generator, so the instance of the random so we just pass in rand because that's what we just created and the second one is a number and what that number represents I have uh, slightly forgotten so um, I'll just have to edit this like a pro while I look it up on my other screen uh, oh god what is it it's the number of octaves that's it um, and that's like a sort of thing basically and you can experiment with this really uh, because the best way to do this really is just you know play with it play with the numbers see what changing them does um, but anyway we're going to be using 8 because that I've so play this a bit and that gives a nice hill. So now we've established that, um, what we need to do is well save it and then get rid of these errors. So these, these just, uh, this just needs to be imported so we just can hover over it and click the top one which will generate the import for us and it just has but it disappeared because it's minimized. So now what we need to do is work on uh, using this. Um, well actually first what you need to do is set the scale of the octaves or the octave generator and the way we do that is by using octave, you know, the variable just defined, and then set scale. And this takes one parameter, which is a double, and you have a number with a decimal point, basically. Um, and what I'm actually going to define this as one divided by a number. Um, you can just type in the decimal if you want, but this is a little bit easier to you know, think about. 64.0 has to be point zero because it's a double, it's a bit awkward. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's basically that. Um, and you know, 64. This uh, sorry, I should explain. This is the scale basically. So what this does is sets the uh, effectively the distance between the hills or the peaks of the hills. So like I said before, what this is doing is generating a sort of random arrangement of sort of peaks and you know low points, troughs and then it'll smooth the terrain between them which you know, like a nice smooth curved pattern um, and the 64 represents the distance between the peaks of the hills, the high points um, and I'll demonstrate that later on but just for now we're going to be going 64 which is a bit of an awkward number really because it, it generates quite weird looking terrain but not really natural looking okay so now we've set the scale what we need to do is loop over 
the uh, x and z coordinates and you know, actually generate the terrain. So this is basically what we did in the previous Flatlands video. So what I'm going to do is use a for loop here. So I'm going to do for x equals 0 while x is less than 16 increment x or pre-increment pre-increment oops I've done the wrong thing there there we go okay and then inside this loop we're going to have another loop for the z so for z equals 0 and while z is less than 16 increment z okay so uh, one thing that we do want to do, just you know, like we did previously, I think, is set the very bottom layer to bedrock, just so people don't fall through. Um, so what we're going to do here is um, add to our blocks array, and we're going to be adding at the coordinates. So we're going to use the coordinates function that we created, method that we created, and then we're going to pass in x for the x coordinate. So that's fine. 0 for y because we want it at 0 and z for the z coordinate because that's fine so these x and z are coming from the loop that we're doing so just as it is here it will just set the very bottom layer of the map to bedrock well not yet we need to set it equal to the material materials id and the way we get that id is from the material uh, class or not really a class but whatever um, and then we just set this to bedrock so material bedrock and then we can use the get ID method like so and this needs to be cast to a byte because it is by default returned as an integer and it needs to be a byte because this is a byte array and that's just how it works basically okay so once we've set the bottommost layer to bedrock what we need to do is um, uh, sort of loop up to the height of the hill at that point and the way we get the height of that hill of the, at that point is by um, generating a um, an amount of well, I'm going to call it noise. This noise that we're going to be generating is a going to be a number between minus one and one. Okay, and it's going to be based on this height map. So one will be the highest point of the hill, and minus one will be the lowest point. So what we need to do is well, we need to generate that noise. So let's do that before we go any further. So just under where we've set the I set bedrock to the bottom layer to bedrock going to create a new variable which is going to be a double because it's got a decimal point it's between minus one and one so it could be like any degree of preciseness between those so double we're going to call this variable noise and it's going to be equal to the octave variable that we defined just above and then we use the noise method and the one we want is I believe this top one no it isn't we want the see this can be used to generate noise in one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions. So these methods at the top that just use X are the one dimensional noise uh, methods. Uh, these are the 2D and the bottom ones where X, Y, and Z are 3D. So we want the 2D one because we just want hills. We don't want like sideways hills or anything weird. So we just use this one here, I think. We can see if that's wrong in a moment. No, that's right. So all we need to do is pass in the X and Y and then this frequency and amplitude is something I'll get to in a moment. Um, so the x coordinate actually needs to be the x coordinate of the, um, you know, in the actual world. Um, and I believe I covered this before as well. But the x we have here is the x coordinate in the chunk, and then up here we have the chunks coordinate in the world. So the way we can generate the actual world's x coordinate is just by doing um, the chunks, you know, the coordinate within the chunk plus the chunks x coordinate multiplied by 16 and then the same applies for the y so chunk uh, the very sorry the coordinate within the chunk plus the chunks y coordinate multiplied by 16 because there are 16 blocks within a chunk okay um, i'm not sure if i actually mentioned oops sorry that should be z not y um Oh, and obviously that should be as well. Okay, right. Uh, I'm not sure I actually mentioned, but this generate method, um, I definitely explained it in the previous video, but this generate method has to take these parameters, the world, a random generator, and a chunk, x and, co x and z coordinate. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did explain that in some detail in the previous video. So anyway, there you go. Now, this frequency and amplitude 
are essentially two numbers which represent how much the um, you know the amount of noise should change between sort of steps if that makes any sense so if you set frequency or amplitude to, hi to a higher number you'll get basically steeper hills um, but that is also dependent on the scale which I'll demonstrate so don't worry too much if this doesn't make any sense but just for sake of this you can set these to 0 0.5 both of them which will give you quite a nice smooth you know natural looking um, sort of hill shape basically so now that we have this noise and this is a number between minus one and um, one like I said what we need to do is multiply this by like a sensible height which will be the maximum height of our hill so for the sake of this let's just go for uh, I don't know 12 so we'll multiply this by 12 like so so the way this works is this will net this because we'll multiply by 12 this will now be like a decimal number between minus 12 and positive 12 um, so yeah that's basically that so what we need to do next is loop um, sort of over this so we're going to use this as our maximum point so we're going to start at y equals 1 because we set y equals 0 here to bedrock so we're going to start at y equals 1 and we're going to loop upwards however that's something that I'm going to leave for the next part um, because I'm getting a bit you know towards my accepted limit for time so thank you for watching and come back for part two where we will um, actually generate the terrain and I'll demonstrate it all and these you know I'll fiddle with these numbers and show you what happens so you don't need to worry like I said you don't need to worry too much about what's actually going on here in terms of octaves you can just think about it as in if I make this smaller the hills will be closer together or further apart we'll find that out <laughs> anyway thanks for watching and come back for part two